Hello everyone here. Um, if you're watching and you want to comment because I am using StreamYard, Stream you need to go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook to give StreamYard permission to list your name in the comments. Otherwise, I don't know who's commenting. All right, we are here today. I have tip number two. Um, I am talking to specifically um, if you're starting somebody out on a French horn um, as a beginner, uh, particularly band directors. <laughs> um, one of the things we talked about last time with mouthpiece, um, position of mouthpiece, but today we're going to talk about the other end of the horn, <laughs> and that is where does your hand go and how, what, what are we doing there? Um, it, can get, it can get easily overlooked, and um, so I just want to address that briefly. And we won't get into all the specifics of it. I'm going to actually be putting up um, some more uh, videos on my website soon. Um, if you want to uh, have access in the, uh, to that free, free video lessons, um, you can check out my website. You can message me below to get on my um, mailing list. That would be the easiest way. Um, but in any event, if you didn't already know, when the horn was first began, it was natural horn, no valve. So with the harmonics um, and the horn and horn calls, horn was used as a signal instrument initially. And so that when they invented valves, they weren't using them initially like we do today. Um, because they used hand horn, the practice was having the hand in the bell. Now, a good rule of thumb is how do you place a hand? What are you doing with your hands? So first of all, put your arm out and your hand out like you're going to shake somebody's hand. Only your fingers are together. Your thumb is attached. So it's kind of like it might be cupped a little bit your palm of your hand looks like this. Now, where do you put it in the bell? <laughs> so if you have, you can either have your horn bell on your leg or you're using your hand to support it. I like to think about the hand in the bell as somewhere around what might be like this little sort of triangle area between your thumb and your knuckles, that's helping support. If you were gonna take the bell off your leg and you weren't gonna set it there, you'd be able to do that because it would be supporting somewhere around here. Now also, this side of your hand is gonna to be touching the wall of the horn bell. So, you don't want the side that you give a high five with that will not be touching the bell. And the way to think about it is if your hand is in there like this against the side of the bell and you want to, everybody's hand is a different size. Some bell throats are a different size. So there's a little bit of adjustment and, you know, really work, with the teacher to kind of help you figure out the best position um, individually for each student. However, one way to think about it is your hand is on the opposite side away from you. Your knuckles are touching the brass, the bell at some point. So you don't need to go too far in as long as your knuckles and the top thumb and pinky are touching nicely on the top and bottom area of the horn. Now, a complete beginner, it's not going to be crazy if they don't have their hand in the bell initially. Um, I have actually seen people start kids out that were too small to hold the horn and actually put a chair next to them 
and have the belts on the chair. However, if they're big enough to hold the horn, it's best to really get in that habit initially because otherwise it's just another habit that they have to relearn. And it does make a difference once you are good enough to play up higher in the range. Now, one of the things with the this because of natural horn, when we're playing in the harmonics, as you go up higher in the harmonics, if your hand isn't in the bell, it's going to be more difficult to play upper pitches and they're not going to be as in tune. And your hand, first of all, you're making the instrument longer. Um, you're helping with the harmonics are going to speak better. You're changing the size of the bore opening and the length of the horn um, with your hand if it's in the correct place. If your hand is not in the bell or it's on this side, it changes the color of sound and it also is harder, as I said, as you go up in pitch um, to play and get the harmonics to sound and the sound to really center and resonate. So for example, if I play a pitch and my hand is where it's supposed to be in the bell. Now you see that there's still an opening. I'm not closing it all the way. So this is another thing that needs to get talked about when you're starting someone as a beginner. But if you have your hand in the bell, let me play one pitch and I'm gonna take it out. You'll probably notice the pitch, what happens. <laughs> As I take my hand out of the bell, the pitch goes sharp. So you don't want to always just adjust with your embouchure. That is another thing that the hand can do. It can adjust the pitch. You can cover just a little bit, just a little bit. You can make very minor adjustments. Um, with your hand to help the pitch, but it, you have to be a little bit careful because it can adjust the color. So because we do play with our hand in the bell, um, an advanced technique would be if you were doing stopped horn and it'll say stopped or plus or gestopped. And it's a color thing and you're closing it and you're also doing other advanced techniques. That won't happen with a beginner, but if your hand, if your hand technique starts in the right place, eventually, if they keep playing, they'll and their hand is in the correct place. It's like closing the door. Closing the door is what I call it. Some people call this hand set that you put in the bell also like thinking of it like a princess wave, <laughs> your princess hand. So, just a few tips on how what we're doing with the hand in the bell. Also, the sound is a lot different. It's more characteristic, of course, with the hand in the bell. Um, it is a little bit mellower, but it's, it's a more centered sound. So if I just play. sound and I can learn to lip it down but you're gonna also work too hard with your embouchure if your hand is not in the bell in a great space and now there are other people that have like slightly different positioning of their hand but I basically want to think of it as the top of your thumb will generally touch the where there's a brace on your bell and your pinky will touch below that and you're touching the side of the horn. And if you think about like that, you have like a tennis ball, a ping pong ball, a small orange or something kind of between your hand and the other side of the bell so that you're not closing it too far. Because when you close your hand too far in the bell, like that, it's going to sound muffled. It doesn't have a good sound and you're going to be forcing your 
embouchure to play in tune if you're usually you have a good ear you can hear that it's not quite on the right pitch when you're playing with others especially so hopefully those tips help if you have any questions please message me comment below check on to my website because i'm going to be putting some free beginner horn lessons up there shortly and uh good luck to your students starting out the school year and also don't be afraid to start them on horn because really it's an advantage they're all in the same place with all the other beginners when you switch somebody to horn later although it might not be a big deal for every student they're starting at the beginning so starting somebody earlier on horn in my personal opinion is is very helpful if if at all possible i am a product of starting horn in fourth grade <laughs> i had the opportunity to play other brass instruments i chose horn i tried other instruments i preferred horn so you just never know somebody might really like it um and you know it'll stick with them but the hand in the bell is going to be a huge help if they start it sort of in the correct position from the beginning if you have any questions please let me know please comment below or message me privately happy to help you have a, a really great year happy practicing and happy teaching Bye-bye.